Welcome to Sports Beat KC, the Kansas City Stars Daily Sports Podcast. It's Monday, May 4th, and I'm Blair Kirkhoff. Today we begin something of a mini series on the podcast on KansasCity.com and in the Kansas City Star. We're remembering the Royals 2015 run to the World Series Championship on a weekly basis. The Royals needed to win three series, and we're highlighting one each week, starting with the American League Division Series against the Houston Astros. You remember this series, right? The Astros came in fresh off a victory in the wild card game against the Yankees, shutting them out in Yankee Stadium. And that momentum continued in Kansas City as Houston took the first game of the series. It seemed like the Royals were always playing catch up against the Astros, and that was never more true than in game four at Houston. The Royals were down two games to one in the series and trailed six to two when they came to bat in the eighth inning. What happened next was one of the great comeback victories in Royals history. So on today's show, star columnist Sam Mellinger and Vahe Gregorian join me in discussing the series and digging deeper into the amazing Game 4 comeback. We were there as part of the Stars coverage team, as was assistant sports editor Chris Fickett, who had the camera rolling in the post-game video you'll hear after the break. So here's the lineup for today. You'll get Vahe, Sam, and me reminiscing, then we'll take a break, and then we'll take you back to Game 4. And you'll hear clips from the broadcast on Fox Sports 1. I think it was Matt Vaskersian and John Smoltz voices you'll hear. Followed by clubhouse interviews. And finally, a post-game discussion of what we saw from Sam, then Royals beat writer Andy McCullough, and me. So here we go. Sam and Vahe are here. You guys ready to take a little trip down memory lane? Hell yeah. Heck yeah. And especially with you kids. Let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to talk about the the 2015 American League Division Series, uh, one of the two, the uh, the one that the Royals and Astros played. But uh, with the, the Royals, with the best record in the American League that year, had to wait to see who their opponent was going to be. And the Astros and the Yankees played in the wild card game a couple of days earlier before game one. And the Astros looked pretty impressive in um, in, in defeating the Yankees. I think they beat him three nothing at Yankee Stadium. So I guess my my first question is, what what were your guys' thoughts going into this postseason for the Royals? They hadn't they hadn't had a great September. They kind of they, I think they were under five hundred for the month of September. Maybe they were bored. I don't know, but um, but they didn't come in hot, and I think it kind of reflected in the first game. But what did you guys think of the Royals coming into the postseason? Well, well, I do think there was. A little bit of angst is my recollection, in part because I think they were actually 11 and 17 in September, and it was rather a strategic, you know, a bit of, you know, it, strategy if that's the right word. Strategic strategy, can I say that? I mean, they were they were they were trying to take it easy, um, but I think there was a school of thought, certainly among fans, that uh, that might be setting the tone for big trouble, and I, I think. Uh, that looked like it was kind of bubbling up there early in the series. Um, so I, I think there was a, a, a little bit of uh, skepticism about where that was going to go. Yeah, I thought it was really obvious in that September that they kind of, you know, I don't want to say like they weren't trying, right? Like they were trying, but it was just so different than the previous, you know, 12, 18 months had been. Like that that team had always been defined by just sort of, you know, balls to the wall, Um you know, just this it, intensity that you don't usually see over 162. And, and um, I remember being it, they, they played, I don't know, I can't remember now if it was the very last series um, that they played, but they, they played the Twins late. And I was in that clubhouse before all those games, and it, it was just such a different feel from a team that I really think had been defined by, you know, sometimes even an over the top intensity, you know, they, they will clear benches at the, at the smallest, at the <laughs> smallest beef, you know, and it, it was just so different. And I remember, you know, to the point where, uh, you know, I, I guess I should not name names as kind of a private moment, but like, you know, there was a player and a coach that got into a pretty big screaming match because the coach was kind of like, uh, we still have a ball game, <laughs> you know, like let's, let's be professional here. And, and the player took, you know, took exception to it. So it, it was just, you know, th- there was a lot going on there. Um, but the other thing that struck me, once they got into the postseason, you could see, like, uh, the intensity was there. That they could, You know, it's not flipping a switch, but, okay, these guys are back and, and they desperately want to do this. Um, 
But I was struck by the Astros. And I know, like, in hindsight, this may have been the last honest series that the Astros mm-hmm. played, right? But um, I-, I thought they were the best team that the Royals played in either one of those postseasons. I really did. Mm-hmm. Well, and well, you know, they had they were 86 and 76. They had a worse record than the Royals did mm-hmm. in the previous postseason, and that was their first winning record in several many years. They had they were not they were just a year removed from the third of their three straight hundred loss seasons. Yeah, but they were tanking. I mean, it was uh, right. they admitted they were tanking, and and but they were tanking and building up, and and that was coming to fruition in in 2015. I just remember how impressive they were against the against the Yankees. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think, I think Keuchel pitched a shutout or six innings of a shutout in, in, uh, in New York and, uh, Colby Rasmus hit a big home run and they were, they were coming to Kansas city ready. And that was, like I said, that was evident in game one. So the Royals lose game one at, at Kaufman and you know, that different than what we had seen the previous two preseasons, right? They were, or the, pre, the, the previous postseason, I, I meant to say, when they, they, they beat the Angels in game one mm-hmm. of the 14, and then they beat the Orioles in game one of the ALCS the previous year. They lose game one and, 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 and they start game two behind, right? They're, they were, they had to come back in game two. So, uh, they're they're tied one game apiece going down to Houston, and of course game three is is all Astros. They win that game four to two, and we're, we now arrive at game four. Before we get into game four, was there anything about the first three games that you remember that um, were you were you convinced that the Royals were in big trouble? This is but even before we got to game four. I was. I, I just again. I just thought. That team was um, – I hadn't really watched the Astros all that heavily, you know, other than when they were playing the Royals in the regular season. But I just – I was so impressed with the talent up and down that lineup. And, and they were all young. They had a ton of energy. Um, you know, it seemed like the Royals had beaten some teams in some ways with that kind of formula, right, with, with a lot of energy and with, you know, doing it from the top to the bottom of the lineup. And here was a team that just had – in some ways, you know, some higher end talent. Um, I, I did think they were in trouble. And the other thing I remember is just how obnoxious Minute Maid Park is. I, <laughs> that that place. What did they, what did they have those like blow up sticks or whatever? I forgot what those oh, things are yeah, called. Yeah. I, I, Thunder sticks. Sticks. But, yeah. yeah. I, I know I sound like the oldest, crankiest man in the world, but I, I hate that ballpark. And, and they closed the roof and it was the absolute loudest. That That's as loud of a baseball game as I can ever remember hearing. It was just... To me, it was just so obnoxious because it was all this manufactured, like thunder sticking, and that, um, that's <laughs> that's that's what I remember. Oh, and one yeah. other thing. Uh, well, I guess maybe I should save this, but yeah, I'll save it. Go ahead. No, I'll just ch- chime in real quick on that point. I, you know, I don't know if I remember feeling like they were in trouble, but I certainly didn't believe in them. I just sort of felt like, eh, I have no idea what to think here. I mean, we'd seen such magic in their postseason the year before. Now they're kind of starting off flat. Uh, in hindsight, I, I I think that that rally in Game Two is becomes a pretty underappreciated rally in the pantheon of all the I guess eight postseason comebacks they had. Because my goodness, imagine if they'd gone down there, down two zero. I don't think they were beaten. It was Keuchel, yeah. right, in, in Game Three. I, I don't think they were going to win that game. They might easily have been swept. Instead, the, the stage was set for Game Four. Well, I, I, uh, what I re- one of the things I remember about the I'm, I'm pretty sure it was game three and not game four. There was a ball. I can't remember who hit it. Yeah. An Astros player hit a ball off the ceiling, <laughs> off the uh, off off the roof, and and uh, uh, and, I, and I don't know. Nobody knows what the you know, would have been a pop out, would have been a home run. But anyway, they they got extra bases on that, and I'm thinking the only other place I'd ever seen that was the you know the Metrodome in Minneapolis and I just thought that was a disaster of a ballpark and anytime you can have a baseball hitting off the ceiling yeah. you know, what does that say about the ballpark <laughs> well and and both those games in Houston uh, were they were day games and yeah. you guys remember walking to the ballpark I mean they were just beautiful afternoons I mean just and I get it like TV it plays better you know all that stuff I get it but god they were just those they were just yeah. beautiful days, you know, to, to have the roof closed. It was just, I, 
God, I know I'm a cranky old man on this, and I'll, I'll own that. But God, I just hated it. Sunday hey, gonna, is a Sunday, top, Sunday and a Monday. I'm going to top you on that cranky old man thing. I, I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was game. It was game three. I still have the photo on my phone for no real reason. But before the game, we're kind of standing down there on the field, and 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 this isn't to say Sal Perez wasn't locked in. It was, just, but it just struck me odd. He was he was taking a selfie of himself. <laughs> like an hour before the game, standing in front of the dugout. And I just remember thinking, like, why are you doing that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's your cranky, dumbass old man. <laughs> Sal right. and his social media. <laughs> All right. So uh, earlier this week, I, 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 um, I went through each of the box scores, and I came up with this stat. So going into the eighth inning of game four, right, uh, the Royals trail, of course, six to two, going into the top of the eighth of game four in Houston. They're down two to one in, in game. So going into that eighth inning, um, the Royals had trailed after 22 innings of the, of the in, in the three games plus, right? The Royals had trailed after 22 innings. They were tied after seven innings, and they led only five innings. So uh-huh. um, it, it just – it always seems to me that the Royals were playing from behind in this thing. You know, they – they were down from the get go in game one. They had to rally to win game two. They were down from the from the start basically in game three, and now they get to game four, and it is um, you know they get they get a, a Perez hits a home run early to take a lead, but then it's all Astros after that, and that um, I, I'm wondering. Let, let's just go there. Let, let's go to the press box in. Uh, sixth, seventh inning in Minute Maid Park on that Monday afternoon, and what um, uh, the the assignment comes down from the office, right? Uh, we've got to have some stories written. Uh, what, what, what if you remember what some of the subject lines were for some of those? Um, what do you what do you guys remember about what do you remember thinking in the sixth and seventh innings, and and uh, when, when it's apparent that the Royals aren't going to win this game? Why? Well, look, we we uh, we were able to procure the uh, the document right the other day that um, <laughs> that, that was and, and look, uh, hats off to us, right, for you know constant preparation and uh, discussion during <laughs> right, the game. Can't and, give us know, enough credit for that. We, really. had, <laughs> we don't give us enough credit. <laughs> we, <laughs> but we had a you know a, a sort of working model plan based on what looked like the uh, impending doom and. Uh, uh, the, the part I remember off the top of my head is that, you know, Sam was <laughs> going to write, uh, I, what was the term, Sam? Something like how the whole season uh, wasn't worth, worth yeah, a damn. All, because all those trades, yeah, all, all the yeah. work they put into it wasn't worth a damn because they lost in the division series. Yep. And then I think I had the segment uh, destined for me to be on how how they uh, blundered through September and completely blew it by handling September <laughs> the way they did. Um, and... Uh, and then things started to shift. And I, I'll just chime in with this point real quick. You know, that game changed something in me about how I look at sports events. We had seen the wild card game the year before. Obviously, that was just insane. Probably more insane because it was it seemed more unprecedented uh, for, for this team. But once you see something like that, a sort of a second time within a, uh, a certain framework, then you start thinking – well, I have, there's no reason for me to declare anything set. <laughs> and that certainly served us well in the, this Chiefs postseason. I, I think I just started looking at things differently a- after that. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah they, <laughs> uh, that, that team really did have a knack for it, man. That was, uh, that was different. That was right in the prime of the, um, like how I just got so used to just control a delete. <laughs> and I, I don't know how many times I did that in the postseason. I guess maybe I, I should come clean here. Um, five, five years later, uh, I didn't always control a delete. Sometimes I control a and just, uh, delete and then post <laughs> or a paste on, on a different <laughs> word, <laughs> word document just because <laughs> that stuff might come back. Some of that might be useful, but that's uh, right. And I'm glad, but I'm glad you said paste instead of post because that could have happened, <laughs> right? Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, um, it was about that time that the Texas governor, Greg Abbott, was <laughs> tweeting congratulations to the Astros, <laughs> a tweet that will live in, in Royals history. I hope uh, I hope Kurt Nelson has a copy of that somewhere in the in the Royals Hall of Fame. But, That'd be uh, great, yeah. Um, but I'll tell you what what 
what did it for me was when Terrence Gore was called out stealing third. Remember when he mm-hmm. uh, – this was in the se- – I think it ended the seventh inning. And it was only three to two at the time. But he get, he had stole – he came into pinch run as he always did, stole second. And then he stole third. He came off the ba- – he beat the throw but came off the base just slightly. And they went to the, they went to the replay monitor and ruled him out. I just said, well, look, if they can't – if their fastest guy can't, you know, can't steal a base, can't keep his foot on the base, then they're 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 not destined to win this thing. And then the bottom of the seventh happens, and Rasmus and uh, I forget who else homer. They had back to back homer. Oh, Correa, Correa hit his second homer of yeah. the game, and 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 Rasmus hit one off the foul pole, off of Ryan Madsen to make it six two. And 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 that was, you know, of course that was uh, that was it for the Royals. They they were going to be done. Um, and then the unbelievable rally unbelievable and I, I went back and watched a little bit of the broadcast and certainly that inning and I, I can't can't count how many times I heard the phrase keep the line moving yeah it, it is the the ultimate example of keeping a line moving for for a baseball team didn't do it with an extra base hit right it was all singles yeah yeah and and, and I don't know when it was in that sequence maybe it was the third hit maybe it was the fourth hit. But I remember just starting to laugh and and kind of just having my hands over my face is sort of at least how I perceive what it was and just kind of chuckling to myself like, yeah, it looks like they're going to do this. You have something like that. And it I don't know if you guys had that, but we probably all laughed together at some point and just shook our heads like this is just surreal. But it, it really was. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at the, the box score or the play by play. They went. Single, 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 single. Uh, reached, <laughs> reached on E six, which was the right. That, the, that was Ke- Kendris Morales off the off Correa's glove. Yeah, off I don't stiff, think should. Uh, I don't think that should have been an error off I, the I, mound. Yeah, it took a, it took a weird bounce. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it hit Sip's glove, and then it, it re- you know, so it, it changed the direction, and Correa was just kind of caught in between, yeah. and it bounces into into center field. Yeah, and then and, they, they tied they tied the game on that. And then, and then Dyson stole second, and this was about the time that Tony Sipp was just absolutely melting down on the mound. I don't know that I've ever seen a pitcher so just visibly <laughs> angry, you know, since like Joaquin Andujar back in 85 or something. I, that was wild. Uh, and then uh, strikeout, Moose, Moose struck out. He's the what, one, two, three, four, five, on a, six, on a full seven. Count. Yeah, the seventh batter of the inning. They finally get it out. Then Butera got that walk. Do you remember that was one of the best at-bats? Ten? Ten pitch walk. It was yeah, phenomenal. That was that was crazy. That was one of the absolute best at bats that the Royals had in in either of those postseasons. Uh, then Gordon with an RBI ground out. Uh, Alex Rios walk, and then Escobar struck out. Uh, one other thing that sticks out. and This wasn't in the moment, but uh, you know, one of these things that you you find out afterward from talking to people that that was, if not Moose's finest moment, it was you know certainly like you know what I might describe as like the moosest moment um, in, in that dugout, like during that rally where he's just, you know, you, you can almost see him like that walk that he had, like stalking around and just mother effing bombing everybody and just like, let's go, you know, you know like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And all those guys afterward talked about, you know, moose kind of getting in them and, um, and firing everybody up. And that, I think that stuff gets overplayed sometimes in baseball, but you know, if, if if you're way, way, way fired up um, for an at bat, <laughs> that's not necessarily a good thing. That could be, you know, counterproductive. But the, they had kind of a similar moment, um, you know, the previous year in the wild card game, and and there a lot of it was um, has been credited, you know, sort of retrospectively with uh, with Raúl Abanez of being the guy to kind of get them going um, and put a fire on them. But but here it was Moose. To me, it's, here. That's- Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Blair. I was just say we're going to hear from Moose and and the players in the in the next segment. Uh, what uh, all the players that were interviewed by Chris Fickett, who had his cell phone camera rolling in the in the uh, in the dugout uh, or in the in the clubhouse, um, they they all all referred back to Moose's attitude. You know, we're not going to lose this game as the Royals were trailing throughout, and and then we hear what 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 Moose had to say about it. But go ahead, bye. Well, just just this to, to sort of uh, amplify Sam's point. It's a really fascinating thing about try smarter versus try harder yeah. in baseball and, and and things like that. I mean, 
there is some magic place where, you know, on the, on the chart where you, you hit the optimal level of emotion and concentration and all that, but probably more often than not, those places <laughs> don't come together at all. And, and thus there are probably many great, uh, uh, rallying cries in dugouts that that never are heard of because they didn't work. You know, right. so it's it's just it's interesting though. You wouldn't say that that didn't have something to do with it. In fact, I feel strongly that it did. But why and how it it really took is you know sort of a phenomenon of its own, right? Sometimes these things just are, are almost unexplainable why they why they come to matter. But but this did. It, it, I think it was their personality. I really do. And, and you know, maybe this is what you're talking about, but I bet that there was some sort of rallying call in the Astros dugout in the bottom of the eighth, right? Uh, yeah, but that just right. didn't take. Uh, but it, that was, um, you know, I thought you were going to go here by with, uh, you know, George Brett always said, try easier. Uh, yeah, don't try yeah. harder, try easier. And, and that was his way. Um, obviously it worked. Um, but, you know, with this team, that wasn't their, like, for whatever reason, that was not their personality at all. They, you know, they were at their best when they felt like they needed to kick somebody's ass. Like that's, that was their, that's how they got to their best. I don't know why or how, but uh, that sure is, is, is what we saw over two years. Yeah. Well, they they win this, they win this remarkable game, but they're not guaranteed anything. It just tied the series. They had to win a game five back in Kansas city. And they put Johnny Cueto on the mound. We referred to him earlier and he had pitched game two, which the Royals won, but he didn't pitch well. And he, and frankly, you know, after the Royals acquired him in the trade with the Reds, he was four and seven for the Royals. Uh, not exactly the, you know, the gamer that I thought they were getting in Johnny Cueto. And again, his first postseason appearance for the Royals was not, was not great. And, but he was money in, in game five and it, it, he, I think I, I think I remember this. He pitched. He threw one pitch from the stretch in that game. He gave up a single, and then on the next pitch, Valbuena hit a two-run homer to give the Astros a two-nothing lead. And after that, it was all Cueto and all Royals. And I just remember thinking, boy, after this one, uh, there is no MVP that's selected for the ALDS. They, that starts at the next round. But just because of the way Cueto pitched Game Five, I'm thinking. All the Royals had something to do with how they got there, but Cueto was the one that really, really, uh, you know, slammed the door in, in Game Five. He was great, and they, and that was another Royals comeback because um, you know it was they were they were down two zip. Yeah, they were down two nothing. It was it was two one after four, and and then they took the lead in the fifth. But um, Johnny Cueto's place in Royals history is. Pretty interesting, you know, uh, because w- when that trade happened, Ben Zobris ended up having a, you know, much, I don't want to say much, but a bigger impact. Um, and, and that was a perfect trade, like the position he played, his added, like everything. Um, but Johnny Cueto was the more, you know, around baseball, that was the bigger acquisition, was to get the, the frontline starter that the Royals had been missing. And he just, he really stunk most of the year. Remember that time, I think it was in Baltimore, where he just got lit. Up, I remember watching that game. Um, I think this is right. I must have been like it must have been a Chiefs road trip or something. I was watching that game from a hotel room, and I mean he was just getting bombed and didn't look like he was really trying. And you know, I've, and I've heard like in real time and, and certainly since that there was a sense that you know um, that Cueto was you know he was <laughs> in football terms sometimes we say making business decisions, um, and and that he was kind of. <laughs> prepping himself for free agency in some ways and wasn't, you know, the competitor that, that he had been, but he was absolutely, when they needed him to be good, he was great. Uh, when they didn't need him either way, he was, he stunk. But when they needed him to be good, he was absolutely, he was fantastic. The, the term that kind of I had settled on at one point with him was that he had gone from being a supposed ace to just complete wild card. You just had no idea what was coming. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and, uh, that I mean, it was two hits and eight innings, I guess. But Sam, isn't this a good time to uh, to elaborate a little bit on make fun of glove thing? So I think that was actually in game two that I wrote that. Um, I, I don't. I guess I don't remember for sure. But Cueto had been, uh, you know, Andy Andy McCullough, terrific at that time beat writer for us, had this great story about how Cueto was in some ways, and the story didn't present it like this, but in some ways, like blaming his struggles on the Royals catchers not having their glove low enough. Like that, that was that was the problem. 
<laughs> out of all this stuff. <laughs> he just needed the glove lower. And at this point, we, we hadn't yet got to the point in our Johnny Cueto tales where uh, he blamed a bad start in Toronto on the uh, the bullpen mound being different, right. than the, a different, right. different height, height than the game mound, which uh, I guess I can say this now. A, a club official told me a day or two after that that they went and measured the mound and it was exactly the same. <laughs> like, I mean, just within a, a quarter of an inch, you know, exactly the same height. There was not, not a lick of difference between the two. Uh, but yeah, there was a point. I think it was game two. It may have been game five, but I think it was game two where Cueto was, was kind of struggling and uh, Andy was asking, you know, hey, what are you going to write? And I usually, I, the way I work is I've got two word docs open right like one's notes and one's a column and at that point when he asked me that the the column doc was completely blank it's just not a not a letter on it and the um on the the notes doc there was only one sentence and it was all capital letters and it just said make fun of glove thing (laughs) like (laughs) i was just gonna work from there (laughs) i don't want to make it sound like i you know ever do like cheat cheat peering over at your screen but but somehow it (laughs) It, it jump off there like neon. <laughs> I was going to have fun well, with it. <laughs> well, all right. Well, listen, we've got two more weeks of this guy, so let's uh, let, let's hold back a little. For, uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll hey, save some for. Yeah, can I say what this, this is the thing I wanted to save for later? The uh, the other thing we were talking about, Game Four of, of what we remember, and right. um, you remember those photos, and it was the front page of the Star. I, probably sports section, but maybe the front page of the A1. Um, and, and it was two photos. And the first was, you know, before the <laughs> before the eighth. And there was that yes, one Astros fan remember. just like, just oh, screaming yeah. and yeah. giving it. So I think it was, at least in my mind, it was Hosmer, Ventura, and maybe Eddie Volquez, I think, that, that were kind of on the front step. And this Astros fan is just giving it to him. And then, and then the photo right below that, you know, he's like, hand or head in his hand and the Royals are, are too. I mean, that, that was such a perfect, memorable, you know, sports front. I mean, the, the, those two pictures next to each other just told the whole story. We, we didn't need to write that day. You know, those pictures just told it all. <laughs> all right. All right, guys. Uh, great reminiscing. We'll do it again a week from now when we, when we talk about the American league championship series, there's no spoiler alert because we know what happened in these <laughs> yeah. games. Uh, but it's fun. It's fun reminiscing about them. And so we're going to take a break. And when we come back, you're going to hear some game broadcast from the, uh, we, we just picked out the fourth game. So ALDS game four Royals and Astros. And, uh, and you'll also hear some locker room clubhouse uh, conversation with, uh, with some happy players afterwards. So, all right, Sam. Bye. Hey, thanks, buddy. All right, guys. Thanks, Blair. Hey, it's Blair. We have a special subscription offer for Sportsbeat KC listeners, unlimited digital access to the Kansas City Stars award-winning sports coverage. Sign up now for one year of Sports Pass for access to all the sports news, features, and columns presented on the KansasCity.com site, and it's only $30. That's a 40% savings off our regular rate. Your subscription will automatically renew after the initial term at 50 bucks, unless you tell us to cancel. Your subscription helps support the sports coverage of KansasCity.com and the Kansas City Star, and that support has never been more important. Please visit KansasCity.com slash SportsBeatKC offer to get this special offer. And as always, thanks for listening. Okay, we're back, and here is how the game sounded on Fox Sports 1. We're just going to play some clips of the uh, of game 4 in starting in the 8th inning when the Royals mounted their comeback. You'll hear Matt Vasgersian and John Smoltz on the call. Here we go. There goes the runner. There goes Correa
for the first time ever. Back-to-back postseason home runs for the Astros. Six outs away from an end of the ALCS with a 6-2 lead. So the call's gone out for the closer, Luke Gregerson. And Gutierrez is able to check his swing and draw ball four. Gordon bounces it to second. Altuve gets to it to get the out at the bag, but the Royals have scored their fifth run of the inning to take a 7-6 lead. A high drive into deep right center. Gomez can only watch it, and that one is gone. Eric Hosmer's last two at-bats of this series have been big ones. An RBI single in the eighth, a two-run dinger in the ninth. Gomez lifts a fly ball into shallow right. Orlando makes the catch, and Kansas City comes back in game four. A five-run eighth. Two insurance runs on the Hosmer homer in the ninth. And the Royals have forced a game five in Kansas City on Tuesday night. So the Royals win it 9-6, to six, dramatic fashion, incredible comeback. That tied the series at two games apiece. Uh, game five would be played two nights later in Kansas City. The Royals, of course, would win that game and go on to the American League Championship Series against the, the Toronto Blue Jays. The Royals had to feel very confident going into game five after what happened in game four. Assistant sports editor Chris Fickett joined us in the clubhouse after the game, and uh, we were talking to... Several of the stars of the game. So the first group of players you'll hear are Lorenzo Cain, Sal Perez, and Alex Gordon. It's amazing. Uh, it's another great comeback. We definitely needed that. They last year, crazy game. <laughs> That's a little excited. Crazy game to me. I never see a game like that before, you know. I can't. I mean, I couldn't explain the wild card game last year, and that was, this is kind of the same thing. Yeah, you know, we came in the eighth inning after they you know, had that big inning, and the moose kind of got to go. I just started yelling and saying, you know, we're not going to lose. Kind of fired up the dugout, and one thing led to, led to another, and just kept on. Okay, now we'll hear from Mike Moustakas. Uh, he was asked several times about what he was saying in the dugout to his teammates yeah, in between the, you know, the seventh and eighth innings. And after Moose, we'll hear from Edison Volquez, who also talks about uh, about Mike Moustakas. Battle, you know, Reels had a great at bat, got us going, and uh, you know we were able to continue from that. What, what did you call it? Came in and they, I can't say that on my uh, <laughs> No, he, uh, <clears throat> it's just that we're not losing this game. You know, we, we worked too hard, and we've uh, come too far, and you know we just uh, were able to battle and we were able to uh, score some runs at it. You know, I didn't really uh, think about too much what I was saying. I just. Uh, I knew we were going to win that game, and uh, I knew we weren't going to lose. At some point, we were going to be able to find a way to come back and win, and uh, we were able to do that. Uh, we were pretty fired up in the dugout. You know, uh, you know, we were uh, we were jacked up. We wanted to go out there and try to find a way to win, and we were able to do that. Yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, we had a lot of uh, a lot of confidence going into, uh, into today's game, and uh, knowing that uh, we were able to come back in the, uh, in the wild card game uh, just gave, uh, gave us a little more confidence, and uh, we were able to uh, you know finish it off. Today. Well, we never give up. We um, Mustaka came in after the se- after the six, seven and fight it up to everybody like, hey, let's go. We we are not done yet. You know, it's not over yet. Let's go, everybody. Let's do something. And, and everybody started. And the, and the eight, yeah. I think it was. Everybody started getting single, single, single. Yeah, yeah. And I, good up, good up, good up backs. Yeah. And, and and that was it. And finally, let's hear from Ben Zobrist and Drew Putera, who had big at bats in that game deciding eighth inning. It was a huge effort by everybody up and down the lineup right there. Um, you know, the biggest at bat to me was Putera, um, you know, coming in, had had a bat for probably a week, and uh, fighting pitches off and uh, taking tough pitches. And it was just, uh, just a professional at bat all the way through. Um, and everybody was just uh, battling, not trying to do too much, just uh, trying to get the next hit and keep the train moving. Everybody's just hitting singles there early on in that inning, and, um, you know, things just kind of uh, steamrolled a little bit. Okay, so we're back from the clubhouse, written stories, and after each game of the postseason, a group of reporters would find a quiet corner somewhere in the in the press box or out in the concourse, and Chris Fickett would roll the camera, and we would talk about the game. So here is Sam Mellinger and Andy McCullough and myself talking about the game for comeback. This is Andy, Sam, I'm Blair. 
And the Royals have defeated the Astros 9-6 in Game 4 of the American League Division Series. And my question first to Andy is, what just happened? I, I don't know, man. Uh, that was pretty incredible. Um, you know, Houston's bullpen was taxed down the stretch, and they did not pitch particularly well. But when you've got a four-run lead – and, you know, Ryan Madsen, you know, really, like, it was kind of sad. Ryan Madsen pitched his heart out for the Royals this year and just got lit up in the seventh inning. And you're thinking, like, man, what a bummer of a way for the season to end for that guy. And then, you know, you're kind of writing and you look up and there's two guys on and Ben Zobris is up. And then you're like, oh, yeah, the Royals have all these really good players. Like, they have the better team. And so to see them come through, I mean, I guess I felt like they were going to win as soon as Hosmer got that hit. I don't know how you guys felt about it. Um, but it, it just, I mean, this team is really, really good. And, and, and the way that they were able to, after just playing like garbage for two days, you know, for nine innings yesterday and for seven innings today, to just have their best at bats of the postseason is just, it's really impressive. Well, how about uh, their, their win for the ages came just in time uh, in, in, a, in a do or die situation, just as it did last year. I thought about last year as that was unfolding. Um, good comparison. I mean, is this like the wild card winner last year? Yeah. First of all, great shirt. <laughs> It is. It looks Excellent good on you. shirt. Excellent shirt. Uh, second of all, yeah, I mean, that was, it, it was the eighth inning. Gregerson's on the mound. I mean, it, there was just too much, uh, too many similarities. Uh, yeah, I mean, the Royals still have to win on Wednesday for this to really matter, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah, if, if yeah. you lose on Wednesday, then it's sort of like, wah, wah, wah. Yeah. But the thing about yesterday, they, they never broke through, but they did have a lot of really strong yeah, at-bats. They gave themselves a lot of chances. And then today against, uh, you know, a, a lesser pitcher, I think we can say that, uh, you know, they they finally did get that breakthrough in, in the eighth inning. And uh, certainly a lesser bullpen with the yeah. Astros. So let's, let's take a quick look at, at game five. Who are we going to see? And uh, Yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be Johnny Cueto and Colin McHugh. Uh, McHugh the, game one, the game one, the game one starter. Uh, sorry, no, uh, game, 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 game one for the, for the, uh, the Astros, Astros and, and game, game two, two for the Royals. Right. Um, yeah, McHugh was all right in game one, but the Royals absolutely left runs on the table there. I, I don't think that's necessarily a, a, a bad matchup for the Royals. I'm sure they'll be happy to take another crack at McHugh. Um, and look, you know, this is why the Royals got Johnny Cueto. I feel like we say that before every freaking Johnny Cueto start at this point. This is why they got him. And at some point, maybe he'll pitch like the guy the Royals thought they were getting. I mean, it's there's a ton of pressure on his shoulders, and there should be. You know, you want to make $150 million as a free agent? You know, show up. And so that's what, you know, that's what's on his shoulders tomorrow. Or whenever. Wednesday? Wednesday, I it believe. It is hard Wednesday. to, like, remember that, too, right? That Johnny yeah. Cueto has this awesome track record right. as a pitcher in Cincinnati. Because right. all we've seen in Kansas City is a whole bunch of disappointment. He had hit a couple nice little flashes, but even in a lot of those games, left a you know got a lot of runners on base. You know the five start nightmare um, mm -hmm. wasn't that good no. in this series, no. and um, you know now there's there's <laughs> there's no more room. You know this has got to be the time that he shows up, or he's going to re be remembered in a really 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 <laughs> rotten way. <laughs> right. in Kansas City. <laughs> there's so much to talk about and read about, so follow the coverage of the Royals in the postseason in the print editions of the Kansas City Star online at KansasCity.com and on your True Blue app. That'll do it for today. Thanks to our production staff of Derek Donovan, Savannah Smith, Randy Mason, Beth Welsh, Jeff Rosen, and Chris Fickett. Links to stories from the 2015 American League Division Series can be found in the show notes and also on KansasCity.com and in the print editions of the Kansas City Star all week as we review uh, the American League Division Series. So earlier in the episode, you heard me talk about the Sports Pass offer, and that's still good. It's a good one, 30 bucks for a year's worth of sports coverage. But here's an even better offer. The entire Kansas City Star product, sports news features, commentary analysis, the whole shebang. You get all the stories written by my talented colleagues, and the details can be found at account.kansascity.com slash subscribe. That's account.kansascity.com slash subscribe. In either case, the Sports Pass or the full subscription, you're supporting local journalism and helping us deliver products like Sports Beat KC, which will be back on Tuesday because this is where we talk sports in Kansas City. 
every day. 